We have been victorious in Christ. Have you received the Holy Spirit's revelation of what it means to be in Christ? It is in Christ that we have gained victory. Many believe I in Jesus, but do not know the position in Christ and therefore miss out on victory in their personal lives. 2COR.2-14 But thank God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ and reveals by us everywhere the knowledge of him as a delectable fragrance. Paul writes, But thank God, which always leads us on a triumphal train. Many who have received Jesus as their personal Savior are working on this victory themselves. They themselves take up the fight with God's help. This is the battle that Jesus has won, they are trying to fight again. They fight against all their temptations and sinful passions, even against the devil they fight. They are asking God to help them in this struggle. They have not seen that Jesus Christ has won this battle. And that we are offered a sanctuary where there is rest and peace. Namely, in Christ. The idea of winning victory is appealing to old Adam. He wants to help fight both sin and the devil. But he constantly gets in God's way. He does not understand that victory is a gift from God in Christ. Old Adam has his own way of reading the Bible. He and the devil read the Bible the same way. They read from this understanding that the work of salvation is not complete, something is missing. They read the scriptures like this. Paul writes, We must fight the good fight. Peter writes, Oppose the devil. So the battle is not over, salvation is not yet completely won, there is something missing that we must complete. But they forget that adding. Fight the good fight with faith. 1 Tim.1-18-19 OG Peter says. 1 Peter 5-9 Resist him, fasting in faith. What kind of faith is being talked about here? It is the belief that Jesus won the full victory on the cross over both sin and the devil. The battle is settled. We receive the victory in Christ as a gift both over sin and devil. We receive the victory in faith. Our starting point is not struggle, but victory in advance. The Victory of Jesus Christ The Jesus who won victory on the cross is the same Jesus who now dwells by faith in our hearts. So we have the victor living within us. Ephesians 3-17 That Christ may dwell by faith in your hearts, and that you may become rooted and grounded in love. That is the faith that both Paul and Peter speak of. Christ in us by faith the victor in us by faith. 2 C.O.R. 13.4-5 For if he were crucified in powerlessness, he now lives by the power of God. We, too, are powerless in him, but you must learn that with him we live by the power of God. You must search for yourselves whether you are in faith, yourselves you must try. Do you not notice in yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Otherwise, you will not stand trial. We must examine ourselves whether we are in faith, we must be able to feel ourselves of Jesus Christ being in us. So the Jesus who now lives by the power of God now lives in us by faith. So it is the victor from Calvary, the one who won the victory over sin and the devil who now lives in power in us by faith. As one said, when Satan knocks on my door, I send Jesus to open the door. 1. Yes. For to four children you are of God, and you have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. What did it say here? You have triumphed.
So we shall not fight our way to victory over either sin, nor devil, nor evil spirits and false prophets. C. Verse 1. Victory is a foregone conclusion. What else did it say? Because he, Jesus, who is you is greater than he, the devil, who is in the world. Can this be said more clearly? 1 John 5 4-5 For all that is born of God triumphs over the world, and this is the victory that has triumphed over the world, our faith. Who can conquer the world without the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? What did it say here? This is the victory that has triumphed, our faith. Where is the victory? Believing that Jesus is the Son of God. Who is He? He is the crucified and resurrected one who triumphed over sin and devil. The battle is over. Satan lost. We have received in faith the victory by mere grace. The victory of Jesus Christ in us is a victorious life over the lusts and desires of the flesh, given to us in advance. Instead of fighting the tendencies of the flesh, we receive victory over it by the belief that it is defeated by the cross. Gal.5-24 And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. It said here. HR, it's in the past tense. Have crucified, now is not the time to crucify the flesh, but it has been done by faith in what happened on the cross. Worry, unloving, slander, jealousy, pride, titillation, moodiness and whatever else we read in Gal 5:19-21 is defeated on the cross and that victory is given to us as a gift we can receive in faith. Imagine, we are set free because someone else has fought the battle and triumphed on our behalf. But are the tendencies of the flesh gone? No, they are still tempting, but we are not taking up the fight. Someone else does, he completes the victory, which I s won. He completes it in practice. Gal.5-17 For the flesh desires against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, for the two are at odds with each other, that you cannot do what you would like. Here many misunderstand. They read that they are in battle with the flesh. But it doesn't say that. The dispute is not between our spirit and the flesh. But between the spirit of God and the flesh. The Spirit of God in us is contrary to the temptations of the flesh in us. We must, in faith, leave this struggle to the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit fights within us, as it was written, we cannot do what we want. We cannot entrust ourselves to the works of the flesh, the Holy Spirit holds back in us. Romans.8-5 For those who are guided by the flesh are the carnal but those who are guided by the Spirit are spiritual. This speaks of reborn by the Spirit and not born again. Those who are led by the flesh are those who are under the zeitgeist of this world. The spiritual are the born again and they are guided by the Spirit. The word atra is a strong word and means to crave. So we cannot both crave the carnal and at the same time crave the spiritual. Romans.8-9 You, on the other hand, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Here is a message of joy for faith. You, on the other hand, are not in the flesh. We do not succumb to the works of the flesh. We cannot live off the life of sin, to consciously live in sin. That is clear. If you are born again, you are not in the flesh. The flesh lives in the earthly, and has its interest in the world. But those who are born again and are in the spirit lift their eyes to the heavenly. 
The inherent spirit is proof of our new position in Christ. We are in the victor and the victor is in us and he has sent his spirit. Who have taken up residence in us. Rom.8-16 The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. The Holy Ghost gives his personal testimony in our spirit that we are born again and that we are children of God. We have gained salvation through the Holy Ghost. No sin and accusation from the devil can wrest from us the certainty of salvation. We are children of God by faith. Now we understand what Paul writes to Titus. Tit.2 11-12 For the grace of God was revealed for the salvation of all men, and educates us to say no to wickedness and worldly desires, and to live prudently and righteously and godlyly in the present world. Thus, it is not the legal requirement that educates the born-again Christian, but grace. What, then, is grace? It is that by grace we have been given victory on the cross as a gift without conditions. It is that we have received the Holy Spirit, who guides us to the whole truth and educates us to say no to worldliness and wickedness. May God's grace through the Holy Spirit give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in Christ. So we see what great salvation we have been given by grace. Amen.